Hi guys, Gary Bunnell here. Um, so, and now I would like to address some of the questions about uh, the difference between eternal souls and earthborn souls. Eternal souls, um, they, they are a particle from the mind of Creator, as I keep saying over and <laughs> over again, I apologize. Um, they literally, it's like if you, if you gave a neuron to another person and then that neuron witnessed their experience. And that neuron then interacted with the other neurons within their cranial brain. So the earthborn souls are a little different in that they are, they are literally born of Gaia's manifest reality. So my very famous uh, image of a human. So here's a human and happy human. And uh, this being has this wonderful etheric form that holds most of its memory and, and uh, it transfers a lot of memory from different incarnations into the mental body of the soul. It, it does retain its record though. So in the Akashic records, uh, you have two layers, one for the spirit and one for the eternal soul. And both are near identical with the, with the only difference being the soul's record doesn't have judgment or emotion or it doesn't record that aspect of it. Whereas the spirit uh, record has all of that. It's got everything. So uh, remember the, the soul is a mere witness. So, and let's do this as the soul. And as I said in a previous video, the soul has six layers. Um, it has an etheric form which matches against, it, it, it's where it connects and collaborates through the human etheric form. So it's all right there connected. That's where they connect. Then it has, uh, it has the etheric form, then it has the astral layer and and that is considered to be a body. Uh, there are forms and bodies. So the body of the astral has three separate layerings. One is the lower astrals, the mid-plane astrals, and the upper astrals. Then what you have in the human is you've got that wonderful causal. Then you've got the, and that's a, that's a form, that's not a body. Then you have the mental body. You have the celestial form. And then you have the Christ body. So, that is, is how the, the eternal soul is arranged. It's like uh, all the different layers in the akasha, the akasa, is all the layers are, are like this. They're, uh, they have a function. Uh, each layer within Gaia's mind has a representative form of life on earth. So, so when we look at how souls, eternal souls are done, then we look at, uh, we then go ahead and look at the earthborn soul. So you're still talking about that human. So when the, when a human gets to a certain point and they become aware of all this, and what happens is that the awareness, spirit awareness, lifts into soul consciousness and there's an invitation that's automatic. And that invitation is for that spirit to now take the body that it helped guide in, in its creation um, and return that body and the spirit, return it as one expression, no longer a collaboration, but one expression of pure energy. So what you have when you have that 
happening is you've got this wonderful radiant being who has taken who has taken the invitation to ascend and in that ascension um, uh, everything is integrated for that spirit so all of its timelines it's millions and millions of expressions of life get all integrated into one final form of energy and the body the ancestral memory the dna that it's been collaborating with that also gets all integrated into pure energy and in some circles some lineages it's believed that an ascension affects seven generations back so when a person ascends it is it the ascension affects everyone along that time or along that ancestral line i know uh, we see time as linear and and gaia and and eternal souls see it as simultaneous so you know that's that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> so this being then ascends so they take up the man the invitation they ascend and they're in an adjacent reality. However, they can manifest a form that would appear to other humans who have not ascended. It would appear in an angelic way as opposed to a solid mass. And it would seem to be thought-based where, where it, it travels at the velocity of thought. It, it can give any kind of form of expression that it wants. And that's fun, that lasts for a while. Then that ascended human would then want to perhaps invest in another timeline or another life or another um, you know, human experience where, where there is an ascended being and a physical form, no longer a spirit, but an ascended being in a physical form. So what this ascended being does is it finds a human female in, on earth it finds a, a female human with a womb that is harmonically equal to it and what happens is when this ascended being connects with a womb that can withhold its energy it then appears to the recipient the female and says hi uh, like to take up residency in that womb of yours and and uh, you can birth me and then we'll go from there so so then what happens is that this being goes into this womb um, when the when that being is then birthed out into this reality it now um, this is, a, by the way, the female is an ascended master also. It has to be. So now we have an ascended master who has come through an ascended master who now has the opportunity to become an earthborn soul by ascending that new form. And when it ascends that new form, it is now a soul equivalent to eternal souls. The difference being eternal souls go from system to system, taking, taking all the information of their witness from one system to the next and helping to establish uh, life in that system. So the earthborn soul will stay in this system as long as this system exists. Now, should something happen to the planetary structure here, it would go to another system along with all the other earthborn souls. They would go as a soul group to another system and probably the, another system that Gaia herself would have gone to and established life. So it only leaves the system if something were to happen to it. And that's happened in other systems. So uh, then you have this amazing, this earthborn soul is this amazing being. It has recall of every single um, soul, eternal soul that it has ever experienced. 
It has all that data from them. It has all the data from all the life forms it's been, all of its timelines. So this is really an amazing being. And this being is, is not only connected to Earth and the life on Earth, it actually is the life on Earth. It becomes a collaborator with Gaia. And that takes life on Earth to a very different level, completely different expression. Now, this is happening now for a reason. In the middle of this unity cycle, eternal souls all are going to leave. And when they leave the system, humans still need that threefold mind. So earthborn souls will take up the role of the eternal souls with a big difference. The earthborn soul will actually be very involved in the guidance of every moment of every timeline. The timelines that are created will be Gaia's manifestation, not the eternal, like not the souls. Right now, eternal souls are like creating the timelines. In the future, Gaia will create the timelines and those humans will be body of the earth, spirit of the earth, and soul of the earth. So this, is a very, this will be a very powerful reality and one that, that instead of having divisiveness, will have this profound connectivity and life will be very, very different. And uh, all the adjacent aspects of Gaia's mind will also then be in collaboration with these earthborn souls. So uh, it's, it's a big deal and it's, it's happening, it's starting to happen. You're not gonna hear so-and-so was in, in the kitchen doing dishes and suddenly ascended. You're not gonna hear that type of thing. But there will be beings, human beings ascending and there won't be any religions created around them, which is a pretty major difference. Now, um, I, I love the teachings of Jesus. Uh, because he was a master's master. He was the highest form of human you can gain. He was an earthborn soul on earth as a human. And he said, the things I am doing now, you will do and more. He also said, if an individual is of the right mind, that individual could say to the mountain, dive into the sea, the mountain would have to obey. The miracles that he created were because his status as an earthborn soul. Now imagine a whole, um, a whole reality of humans at that level working together. Amazing. So, uh, it's, it's quite a lot to digest. I understand that and, and I appreciate your listening and we can get into this more and more. There's a lot more to this, but I thought I would give the basics. So, thanks again for listening and I'll connect again soon.